Well, I'm Brian English for Name Hyperbytes. Uh, welcome to part two of this um, Docker deployment and cloud provider series. In this one, we're going to look at our cloud provider and we're going to be looking at our remote Docker deployment. So the first thing I need to do is I just need to pop into my DigitalOcean account and we need to create an API token. So I'm going to generate a new token. I'm going to call that. Uh, just on these tokens, you can use the same token for every site, or you could. Uh, you obviously need multiple tokens if you've got multiple machines. Um, so I think I'll just call this token after my common name. Leave it at 90 days for the moment. If this is going to be a long term thing, then you could uh, change this to say no expiry. I can now copy that API code and I now go back into Flatma. First thing I do is I go into Cloud Providers, add a new provider. My provider will be DigitalOcean, and the, it's actually, I think, pulled that API key directly from. Let's see if it is um, W109D57. You know, let's pull it from a, an old install. So I'm just going to paste that new key in there. Now, biggie here, SSH keys. Um, if you're going to mess this up, um, the most likely place you're going to do that with is with your SSH keys. Those keys are pulled from your Docker um, account. And I, I would recommend, if you can, just stay with the same key. So here we've got an existing key already on the computer. And I'm just going to leave that rather than creating multiple. Otherwise, I can get a little bit confused as to which key is with for which. So I'm clicking that. And you see we've clicked, linked into DigitalOcean with absolutely no problems at all. So next thing we need to do is create a server. So we'll create a new server. I'm going to call this um, my demo after the actual um, project name. Um, I'm going to put London because I'm in there. Unfortunately, the $4 ones aren't available in London, so I've got to pay $6 on that. Um, and click Create. Now, this can take a little while. So this is one of the areas where you can probably go and make a cup of tea and then come back later. Um, it appears that everything's happened quickly, but it hasn't. And if we now go into our projects, we can see that my demo um, droplet is being created automatically by Wappler, and then it will be configured, etc. So let's back into Wappler. And we'll, we'll probably see this waiting going for quite a while yet until they actually get the, uh, the full install and setup completed. So I'll be okay. So now we see our server is finally uh, set up. And you see there, it's actually taken it um, 300 seconds. So I've got five minutes to complete. Um, so our server is now up and running. So what we can do now is we can actually con consider setting our target to do that. But I'm not going to do that straight away because I think it's important we show you all the processes. What I want to do now is to attach a um, domain name to our DigitalOcean droplet. So if I go back into uh, DO, I can add a domain. And the domain I'm going to add is data logistics. Data Logistics is actually my original company name from many, many years ago. So let's add that. You see now it's telling us that our domain name should have these name servers set. And we also have our um, A record should point to our droplet to 134 through to 163. You see that 
that's correct set up correctly so all we need to do is make sure that our name servers are pointing in the right direction so I'm going to go into my hosting service account for Data Logistics UK look at the name servers and actual fact I've already preset these other than I haven't put name server 3 in for some strange reason no I'll get rid of that Okay, I'm just having a, a, a bit of a moment there. Pasting instead of copying. That's rename server three. That's rename server two. And update those name servers. So it doesn't like that dot there. Just having a bit of a moment there. So, NS2. Wish I'd left them alone now on two name servers. Never mind. You've got to learn these things happen in the world of the web. And that's it. Those are set properly now. So, when those notes name servers finally get active, they point to our um, droplets. Our droplets. Then points uh, so to DigitalOcean. The DigitalOcean points at the our droplet IP address. And what we've got to do now is wait for that to happen. Um, I tend to just pop open PowerShell and a ping. If I learn to spell anyway. Uh, Logistics UK, let's see what IP address they pop back with. Because the name server is already set, that's no problem. It's actually picking up the correct one straight away. So now we know that we have our domain parked to point at our um, new droplet. So let's now just have a look and see what happens there. We haven't actually deployed the here, so it should come up with site can't be reached. That's fine. I just wanted to prove that we have got nothing set up yet. Now let's go into our project settings, targets. Let's set up the production target. I'm just going to call it production. It's a Docker target. Usage of production. Connection is remote. Say so straight away this area changes and we can pick that. Droplet name, the cloud server that we've already got set up. You'll see the web, web server is set to the IP address. We can now change that to the web name. The also the database is pointing that same droplet at the moment. And uh, provided everything has updated as it appears to do, I should then be able to switch to production deploy and fingers crossed we will build that website on that droplet uh, upload that one and only file that we've actually written and that will then be available on our production server again this can take a little while first time through it's much much quick after that um, so there might be a little bit of editing in here just to shorten this procedure as well There we are, we now successfully created that um, site on our TO droplets and we're in production. I should now be able to click that open. You'll see now, hello Wapplers, that is running on our live server data logistics. But you notice we're still using HTTP rather than um, the secure version. So our next one is to look at services, add service system, First of all, I'm going to add Portainer. I'm not going to bother giving it a URL. Um, well, I suppose why not? So 
So now we have a bit of URL. I also need now, actually we'll deploy that. Let's get that port in added. And once we've got that added, we can also now add traffic, which will add our um, SSL encrypt certificate in. So we're going to call that, uh, give it an email, uh, Brian at Hyperbytes. UK. I'm not going to bother. You can install the dashboard so you can manage this online. I'm going to keep things simple here. So we've got that. And now let's deploy that. Now we could get an error here. Um, you can see sometimes there is a port error that comes up. Um, but fingers crossed. Yeah, see we've got a port error here. Um, that's not unusual. Don't worry about it. Um, there is an easy solution to it. We go into targets, we go to our production, and we literally take that port out of the setup. Save that. And redeploy it. So this should be much quicker than the previous ones because all of the uh, dependencies have been already loaded on the all. Um, Digital Ocean droplets. And now if we try deploying that again, fingers crossed, that should now work. There we are, all services launched. So now we have our SSL certificate on it as well. So we can go back into our settings, production, and we can now happily add that all important S to that URL. We'll save that. I'm going to fire this up again now. You see now we've got the padlock there. We can see we're on an HTTPS. Hello, Wabblers. And uh, that really was as simple as that. That is us. Setting up our cloud provider, DigitalOcean, install, installing to that droplet, adding our SSL certificate um, to it, so we have uh, all of that information we need for the live server. So the next thing I want to look at is actually a um, database container, which will allow us to have shared databases across the system.